I'm literally scrolling on Instagram and you have no idea because you can't see anything. I've been using the new $800 Meta Ray-Ban display glasses and I'll tell you straight, this is the first smart glasses that actually started to convince me. But it's also something I wouldn't recommend to most people yet. In this video, I'm gonna show you how they look like in real life, what the display actually feels like, what's good, what's annoying, and if this thing is worth the price of a flagship phone or if Meta just wants you to beta test the future for them. First, let's see what these glasses actually are. So think of this as Ray-Ban smart glasses on a stroid. You still get a camera in the frame, dual speakers in the arms, a bunch of microphones in the front, but now you also get a monocular display in your right eye, a transparent HUD style interface, a neural band on your wrist to control everything. Sounds crazy, but let me break it down. The main part of these glasses is the display that only shows up in your right eye. It's not in the center, which is good. It's in the lower right side of your vision. First minute, you're like, what is this floating weird screen? But your brain adapts stupidly fast. As you can see, it's full color, 42 pixels per degree if you care, and insanely bright. We are talking about 5,000 nits, that's crazy. I used it outside in bright sun and I could still see everything. Crystal clear. It's literally like a little screen floating in the corner of your eye. Like you don't stare at it like VR or anything. You just look at it when you need to and then you're back to real life. And here's the crazy part. From the outside, it's basically invisible. On the older prototype, if the display was on, people could see that glow, that light leak. On this one, unless someone stares at you from the perfect angle, they have no idea you have a display on. Maybe they just notice you are looking a bit down right instead of straight ahead. That's it. So yeah, it's not full AR map to your room or the street. For a first display version in something that's look like in normal glasses, it's impressive, not gonna lie. Next, we have comfort, weight, and the design. First, let's talk about comfort because this is going on your face, not in a drawer. They are definitely thicker than the normal Ray-Bans, obviously, but they are not like VR headsets bulky like crazy big it's around 69 grams yes the internet already made the joke so i don't have to so 69 is from this side normal ray-bans are around mid 40s so you can't really feel the difference they also have flexible hinges so they don't feel like they'll snap every time you open them a custom battery packed into the arms plus you have transition lenses by default meaning they switch to sunglasses on their own when you go outside which honestly is one of the only things that works perfectly but it's not that good you know it's it's not gonna go like dark fully like it like it's sunglasses you know what i mean i wore them for over an hour straight honestly i didn't totally forget i had them on but i also wasn't dying to take them off and looks they actually look better in person than on camera if someone walks by you they'll think nice glasses not oh cool robocop now the case deserves its own shutout. It stores the glasses like a normal hard case or folds flat in like two seconds. It still holds multiple extra charges inside. So you can toss it in a bag or even a bigger pocket and keep charging on the go. For once, the accessory is actually smart too. This part feels premium on the right way. How you control all this without looking like a clown? Well, you can still tap the arms and use the capture button, but the main control is this neural band on your wrist. No, it's not a watch. It's reading the electrical signals from your muscles when you move your fingers. For example, you do little pinches to scroll, double tap to break the screen, joystick like swipes over your flat to navigate, grab and rotate motions to change volume or the brightness. And here's where I was actually impressed. Once you get used to it, it feels natural and automatic. It does what you want, like 95, 97 of the time. However, there's a catch to it. The band exactly needs to sit in a very specific part of your arm. Not too low, not too high, just here in between. Unless it's not gonna work whatever you do i mean i never triggered random actions by mistake usually the more natural you make gestures the more stuff you trigger by accident but here it's surprisingly clean i mean this isn't as fancy as 
eye tracking on Apple Vision Pro, but it has one big advantage. Because it's not relying on cameras to see your hand, you can do the gestures anywhere in any lighting without worrying about the angles. Let me take a picture of you, beautiful. Now, cool hardware is pointless if the software is trapped. And this is where things get interesting. Meta is very clearly hinting this will replace your phone someday, but today, it's not that day. Right now, I'd say around half of what these glasses do still depends on your phone. When you turn them on, you get a home screen with time, notifications, upcoming events, then you swipe to see your apps. And the UI doesn't feel super cheap, but it's definitely not smartphone level smooth and animated either. I mean, it's fine, not mind blowing, but there's a big limitation, no real app store yet. Basically, you are stuck inside the meta universe. So messaging, WhatsApp, video calls, also WhatsApp, navigations, Meta's map, not Google AI, map. Meta AI, not ChatGPT, Reels, of course, Instagram, it's all Meta's apps, which is powerful, but it's kind of scary. Now, you might ask what you actually do that feels real, not gimmicky. Well, first you got notifications and messaging, reading messages is finally normal and glasses. The display is big enough to actually read text, open links, watch a reel someone sent, all without taking your phone out. You also got reply options, voice notes, dictation, which is crazy accurate because you got multiple mics on your face. You got some quick preset replies and, and text input using gestures or writing in the air or on your leg. It sounds a bit goofy, but in quiet situations where you can't talk, being able to literally scribble, I'll be there at seven under a table is kind of clutch. And then you got camera and viewfinder. You finally see a viewfinder in the display. So you know exactly what you are framing. You can also review photos and videos right after in the glasses. And specs wise, 12 megapixel photos, 3K videos, some 720p slow motion. Let's be honest. It's like a phone from six, seven years ago. Six, seven. It's good enough for POV and social, but this is not replacing your main camera. For example, you can use it to raise up girls on, on the street. And yeah, there's a tiny delay when you want to take a picture. So people might move quickly and your shot will be messed up before it can actually capture it. Next is my favorite feature, live captions and translation. Glasses use the microphone array to figure out who you are actually facing and give you real time captions of what that person is saying. I tried it with background noise and other people talking. Is it still logged onto the person in front of me? And it was showing me subtitles almost instantly. And now add live translations on top. You listen in another language, glasses show your language. There's a small delay which makes eye contact a little awkward, but the accuracy is honestly impressive. This is where having multiple mics on your face is way better than waving your phone around. If you know, you know. Next, you got maps. Turn by turn directions in your glasses are exactly as useful as you think. You move your head, the arrow moves with you. For people with trash sense of directions, hi. This is actually a game changer. Meta Maps is not Google Maps. Traffic, rating, reliability. I bet my money it's not winning that battle. And finally, we got music and AI. Music is handled via Spotify integration or you could probably just play a YouTube video on your phone and listen to it on your glasses or even watch movies or videos. It works either way. Kind of similar to headphones. Sound quality is better than you'd expect from open speakers in glasses. But once you go above like 40% volume, people around you start hearing your playlist. So your display is private, your music is not. And yeah, Meta AI is fine. The AI itself isn't shocking, but having answers, recipes, instructions floating in your peripheral vision while your hands are busy cooking, fixing stuff, whatever, that's when it starts to feel like a different category from a phone. I can also ask the basic questions like, hey Meta, what's the weather like? So yeah, it can perfectly tell me what's the weather like. Obviously a three year old can also tell me what's the weather like. Now let's be real for a second and let's talk about the 
downsides. $800. It still depends on your phone for a lot. There's no real app store yet. You are locked into Meta's ecosystem for almost everything. And it raises all the usual privacy questions with Meta tracking, God knows what. Also, socially, this is where it gets awkward. Would you rather talk to someone who checks their phone for two seconds or someone wearing these glasses who keeps glancing down right every few seconds? And you're not sure if they're listening to you, reading a text or translating you in real time. Don't get me wrong, this is good stuff, but it will make some people uncomfortable maybe but the real question is should you buy this here's my honest take well it really depends if you're an early adapter a tech nerd a creator who wants pov ai live captions map all packed into something that looks like normal glasses then yeah this is probably the best smart glasses with a display you can buy right now but for most people i don't think this version is worth $800 yet. This feels like Meta's mini to be first move before Apple, Samsung, and Google drop their glasses and normalize the whole category. You are basically paying to be in season one of a show that's going to get a lot better in season three and four. The crazy part is how fast it's moving. Less than a year ago, they had a prototype with a separate computer puck and a price tag like a used car. Now it's all inside one pair of glasses. It does make me think about a post smartphone world where you just look at something capture it translate it navigate it without having to pull out your phone and break the moments we are not there yet but these glasses are definitely step one so yeah meta actually built something that made me go okay smart glasses might actually make sense now but not for everyone at least not yet let me know in the comments would you wear these glasses in the public or does this still feel too black mirror for you thanks for watching catch you in the next one